Hello everyone and welcome to Garrock Farms. In today's video we are going to be sawing some lumber. Dad has his new Timber King up here in our big woods and uh, we're working on that log pile that we made this past fall. If you pay attention to the videos back in uh, I think it was end of November, early December we made this pile. Some really nice hardwood trees here. He's been sawing here and there for the past two, three days. And hopefully today with the two of us, we can uh, get a lot of this, this pile done. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's get to sawing some lumber. First two logs have gone pretty well. I've been uh, moving some lumber or some firewood out of the way over to our firewood pile over in the corner. That's really starting to become one heck of a firewood pile and we got some nice boards over here. Things are really moving. Okay, Dad wanted to stop here quick and talk to you guys about what he's got going here. So we're learning and I started off with a lot of smaller ones. I figured I could mess up a little bit to get good at it all the levers haven't had any incidences with the blade running into iron yet i'm thinking what's going to happen as a person gets more and more acquainted with it and feeling more and more confident probably slip up in there somewhere it's going to happen it's just what it is but we're getting pretty good at it so crooked logs you know our tow board the difference with this mill being that all the control panels way back there is that that depth i'm way back there and i gotta come out here sometimes to eyeball this log 
before you send your first slice through. That's probably your kind of sets the stage for which way, you know, the tilt of the log and everything. And anytime there's some big knot or some odd spot in the log, I always like to put that up and get that out of there first right off. And then it seems like you're you're fighting that trying to roll it afterwards if you get that off. We got some fairly decent ones left here. The cut these are all eight six. This is all gonna go for cabinets and flooring and we got a company that buys this stuff that's not too far from us. We're probably going to have to get that unloaded. We'll never get this all on there, but I think we can heap that up quite a bit more yet since we're just going down through the field and not going anywhere on the road. But I greased it up yesterday again. For the water, we aren't want running any diesel fuel or any other thing other than water. I do put some detergent in there. It's the soap we use in the milk house that um, the hands wash stuff. It gives it a little sudsiness, especially for like pine, which we don't have any pine here today, but that's pretty good. But all my modifications, this definitely is a plus. Now I did add to the tank, but that whole load, we, we maybe didn't even use a half of a container, which I probably could have got by with less than that. But being that it's just water and it doesn't cost anything, I mean, I didn't want to have to go through eight or nine containers of water if we didn't have our shutoff in place. So that way, you know, we're running home and getting more water and stuff. We've been using a leaf blower to blow it off. Actually works pretty good. I prefer compressed air, but out in the field like this, it's the real thing. I think if you blow it off before it gets wet, like if it would rain a little bit or something, it doesn't stick on. And then uh, being that the spring of the year, ground's kind of soft here. We're a little bit of a slope here. That's why my control, I'm, it's higher than I care for it to be, but that's just how this is here. I mean, this whole field is like that. Checking everything's been staying pretty good because what's happening here is it's of all the vibration it's it's settling in. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. If your mill is twisted, well then that's what your lumber is going to be. You're going to end up with very untrue stuff. This set works was something to get used to. That's the thing that I was most concerned about getting to understand it. Which um, if you set set return, so I got this log on here. And I'm gonna go through this a little bit here before we have it running, because then we can't hear nothing. But we run our up lever to where we know it'll clear everything. We set set return. Now what that does is it tells this computer that the blade is X height above the, the deck. Now we want an inch and a half material. That's what they that's what they want when they're buying this. So they have room to planer down to three quarter after it's kilned. It's still got plenty of room to shape the board to where they want it. So anyway. That remembers that, so it remembers inch and an eighth increments off the deck, not including the curve of the blade. So it takes that all in account, the curve of the blade. It calculates that all the way up to where you start. So every time I press auto down, it'll drop an inch, an eighth, plus the curve of the blade, which is another sixteenth. So when I look at the blade and I look at where I want to send that cut through to take the first slice off, I can just keep pressing auto down and it'll find that spot. And then I decide, no, I want to take one more slice off that before I turn the log, it'll take it down exactly an inch and an eighth and cut that. So that what you call your flitches, which is boards like this where they got a little bit of wean on or bark on yet. So now we'll put those, after we get maybe like 10, 12 of those out of several logs, we'll set those all back up in here all at once and then edge them because we don't have an edger. So, but anyway, that way it takes all the guesswork out of it. If this was a manual mill where we'd have a crank to set our height, then we have our scale and everything is right next to us. We're basically right alongside the log. Our vision of what we're doing is a lot clearer. Of course, now with all the computer, we're way back there and we let the computer figure it out for us. It does make it a lot quicker and faster. So when we get the Kent, which is the center of the tr log, like this log being crooked, we're not gonna get a lot out of that thing. To make them shorter, it's not very appealing for them to purchase that stuff once it gets under six feet. So anyway, once you get your Kent, which is a square out of the log without any bark or rain on it at all, then you're pretty much just letting the thing do it for you, basically just controlling the forward and the backward and everything is uh, marking itself until you get to the bottom of the deck. Clear your cutter head out of the way drop down your whatever might be holding your kit in place yet and uh, get your lumber off you know and then we throw our 
log stops back up, roll another one in, and with you here helping, it's gonna go a little quicker so I don't have to come around the side here. Move stuff all the time. And that, that's the one thing about the computer and the, all the hydraulics, they're all back there, so every time you finish a cut, you gotta shut everything down, come out around the side here, or whichever way you're doing it, to remove uh, slabs and flitches, and, and, and then go back and turn the log. And, not complaining, it's uh, really big logs. These hydraulics are the way to go, especially with a person getting older. You don't always have like four kids, teenage boys around to help you roll the log. By the Amish, there seems to have been always quite a bit of help. It was really interesting how we could get some pretty big logs up on that deck without any anything other than some skids and things like that. All right, enough for talking, let's get to cutting.
Things have been moving pretty well. We've uh, probably are approaching at least shy of a dozen logs done already. We've picked out three that were a little too small to even put them on the mill and uh, just ended up cutting them up for firewood. But we've already had to get fuel once. When I went to let the cows in, I, I took care of that, brought some fuel up and, and we've had a strong wind out of the south. So that way is north and, and dad, he's been uh, getting blasted with sawdust, but I think he's enjoying himself. I want to remind you guys too, go check out GearHawkFarms.com if you want to get yourself one of these hats. Also make sure to subscribe and, and share and all that if you haven't already. Let's get back to saw on here.
we're doing all the extra pieces that uh, aren't truly like a slab, a piece of waste. They're big enough and wide enough to justify trying to make some pieces out of them. So it's all the, the scrap edges as we're trying to get to that nice loft. We threw them all back up there. I'd say maybe like every three logs when we're doing that again. Kind of keep uh, keep up with uh, the least amount of waste as possible. There's definitely a teetering game when it comes to uh, what to keep and what to turn into firewood. Okay, he's done sawing now. We're gonna load the rest of this lumber up and then throw a ratchet strap and try to bundle the whole thing. And then uh, try to get this home before it's dark. Sun's setting, so this should be interesting. I'm excited to see what this old running gear can handle and uh, how this trip is gonna go. Cause it's not a, it's not a very level trip. It's a, it's a pretty steep trip. In the meantime, get this thing loaded up. We are strapped down and ready to go. I got the four-wheeler over there all packed up. Dad's gonna take his time getting down the hill here. Show you guys what kind of damage we, we made. There's a big pile of slabs there. Just look at that pile of sawdust. And the log pile, it's, it's dwindling down. Our firewood pile's growing. We were kind of talking and I think with some of them slabs, they'll get to the point where we just make a brush pile of them. If you guys got any good ideas for uh, waste material like this, that's worthwhile let us know i know some guys they use it for like wood chips stuff like that so leave some comments down below what you think uh, a guy could do to utilize all them scrap pieces one day Okay, we have the lumber back to the yard, safe and sound. The trip went really well. This is gonna be the end of the video. Thank you all for watching. Let us know down in the comments if you wanna see more of this type of stuff, if you wanna see the sawmill in action, or any of our lumber or wood endeavors. Let us know if you'd wanna see more of that. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out gearrockfarms.com and uh, we will see you next time.